Welcome fellow YouTube and internet users. Welcome to my channel and this particular video looking at the phrase a man cannot step into the same river twice. I'm going to explore what that means in a simple way and a much more complicated way and we'll go into it as, into as much detail as we can and fully get to grips with what this particular phrase is pointing to. Now, I believe the full phrase which was a phrase by a Greek philosopher called Heraclitus, who lived around 550 BC, as I understand. The full phrase is, a man cannot step into the same river twice, for it is not the same river, and it is not the same man. So what does that mean? Let's look into it. Straight away, a river. We know that the river is flowing. The river is constantly flowing. And we can also say sand and silt and mud is, is being built up on its banks and also sand and silt, mud, etc. is being eroded from its banks. So the river is in constant change. So if a man steps into the river, then walks away and then steps into the river again, the river has changed. So the river is constantly changing. But not only that, the man is constantly changing. Even in a scientific way we can understand this. Blood is continuously flowing around the body. Uh, oxygen is, and carbon dioxide is continuously being moved in and out of the body. Cells of the body are aging and being broken down and then cells of the body are also being replenished. And that's a continuous process, just like the uh, water flowing and the erosion and build up in the river. So there's, there is a flow of the river and a flow of the person as well. So when the person again steps into the river, it is not the same person. The reason that we have a kind of problem looking at this is from the way the mind works, which is what I'll now just go into now. When we use language and thought, which are essentially the same thing, we have a tendency to reify things, which means to make them solid, real, concrete. So when we use the word river, and when we use the word man, from that perspective, we are subtly referencing things which do not change. And yet, we know that they do. So on the one hand, we have the river. And then on the other hand, we have the word or language river. The river is constantly changing, but the word and the concept are not. And similarly, we have the human, the man. The man is in constant state of change, whereas the word man, or the person's name, is a solid, static, permanent thing, and that's how we reference it. So that is where the problem and the confusion lies, which is why this particular phrase is very important. Because on the one hand we have the concepts, the words, the thoughts, which we believe actually relate to permanent solid things. And yet when we look for these permanent solid things, we cannot find them. What we find is something that is in constant change, in constant flow, constant movement. Now this reification of concepts, how we believe when we refer to things in language and thought, they are permanent solid real things. That is also the cause of suffering. I can give you an example. Let us say we buy a brand new car. We, we say this is a brand new car. And subtly we believe that will remain permanent, solid and unchanging. Then, when we get a scratch on the car, or some damage, or whatever it is, and the car changes, we suffer. Oh no, my brand new car, look what has happened to it and we get angry, we cry, we go berserk, we pull a hair out, well not in my case, and we get all stressed and worked up. And yet if we think about it, the brand new car was itself never a permanent, solid, real thing. Even scientifically, on a subatomic level, the atoms, molecules, etc. are in constant state of movement, even though we don't actually see that. So even an object like a brand new car is in constant state of change. And the way we can use this understanding, this phrase if you like, is to fully understand 
the ways of the world and what we're dealing with. Fully grasping what this phrase points to can really help us understand life. On the one hand we have the words, thoughts and language and we have to use that, we have to communicate. When we use the language we are subtly referring to things which we believe are unchanging but they're not. No matter what we reference using language the thing that we are referencing is continuously changing no matter what it is. And going back to that first phrase from the mind we think a man and that is a permanent solid unchanging person and we say a river and that is a permanent solid unchanging thing. But if we genuinely know that both of these things which we are referencing are continuously changing continuously in a state of flow, when is the river the river? At what moment is the river the river that you're stating? Now? Ten minutes ago? Ten minutes into the future? Because whatever you're referencing with the word river is continuously changing. So when is the river the river that you're talking about? Similarly with the man. Now with humans the change that we have within our bodies is so gradual we don't notice it. But it's an obvious example if we take a photograph of ourselves ten years ago and then ten years before that and ten years before that etc etc and actually look at a range of photographs from when we were very young to how we are now we can see that the body has changed. And yet still from the mind we reference this is the same person. And yet clearly looking at the photographs it is not. So from that point of view, if we can recognize that a person is continuously changing, when we say the person's name or that person, when is that person that person? So what is the person that we are referring to? Are we referring to the person as they are now, ten minutes ago, ten minutes into the future, when is the person the person? This phrase and its philosophy can be used in everyday life. For example, say someone offends us. We remember the offence. We remember it and we latch onto it and we say, well I hate that person now for what they did. And the hatred lasts through time. And within that mode we continuously believe that the person who offended us is unchanging. That the person who offended us is still the same person through time. We completely ignore the fact that the person may change. They may regret their action. They may become a better person, who less willing to insult people. And yet the, our very nature of grasping on to this hatred is an error because we Again from, the, again, from the mind, we think that the person is unchanging and that's why we hold on to grudges. And that isn't to dismiss grudges that you have, it's merely to recognize their own limited capacity that the person, or indeed you, may change. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting, I hope you learned something there, or at least followed along my understanding. And perhaps you can look, use this phrase, the, the, use the idea that the words and ideas that we have never seem to point to things which are permanent. Everything is in a continuous state of flux. If you actually take that into your life you can actually realise a lot of things, a lot of useful things. Anyway, thank you very much. Please feel free to leave a comment, click like, click subscribe and I'll see you inside the next video. Thanks very much. Bye.